I'm talking with the amazing and beautiful and powerful Jeannie Gaffigan, and I'm just so grateful that you're here chatting with me today. I can't believe it. Your book was a blessing. The last time we talked, you had gone through and survived and, you know, had your healing of your brain tumor. And now that I've read your book, it's like there was a lot that went along with that. I mean, it was a miracle, but you went through some stuff. Now that you're through this, What's the sort of resonating takeaway for you in the midst of it? Thank you, Rachel, for having me back. I feel like a friend of the show now that I'm a reoccurring character. (laughs) First of all, I'm really happy that I'm at this stage right now where the book is over. Because um, for me, the writing the book, the whole process was also reliving and having to drum up things that I probably would have like pushed down. So... I think that anyone who plays the violin or paints or any kind of artist uses their art to kind of cope. And so, but it's it's a painful process to like produce it. There was definitely a time where um, I never would think that beyond just telling, recounting like the major bullet points of the story to people would be kind of the, the way that I was feeling after this. But... This book just kind of came out pretty fast. Actually, the most time that was spent on the book was like when you share it with other people, they're like, well, put this chapter here and that chapter there, and you kind of have to make it more accessible to certain groups and things like that. And so now that I'm at the end of this journey, I feel that I can kind of move on to the next thing. So I feel like this book was kind of part of the healing process as well. And obviously, I'm still going through some surgeries and things like that for my vocal cords But it's like, I can't complain. Yeah, I can't complain. I'm so happy to be here and I'm doing great. I had to push through sort of my fear of this happening, you know, because it's a fear. I think like, you know, how many of us joke about, oh, I got it. It must be the brain tumor, you know, and then lo and behold, you have this. So do, do you feel like you are now like over the whole, would it create a hypochondriac or are you kind of like, You've survived everyone's worst nightmare, so get to living instead of sitting around being afraid all the time. Well, I mean, yes and no. There's there's two answers to that question. The first answer is, is I'm actually in a much safer position than I've ever been in before because I just didn't go to the doctor for years um, unless I, I mean, I really only went to like the, the checkups that you would have to go to. Um, but now I have to go to a lot more checkups. So they're always looking at my lungs. I have a speech and swallow therapist. I have to get MRIs of the brain all the time to make sure there's no regrowth. So I'm actually like really taking care of myself more in terms of um, a medical thing right now. So I, there's a safety in that because I was like, well, it's time for my scan that no one else in the world is getting except for people who actually have something wrong with them. So when you have that level of, of high-tech imaging, you know, they can find other things early. Yeah. Um, much earlier than they find. So I'm actually in a really, you know, safe position. But at the same time, I'm also not like, well, I got that over with. Nothing bad is ever going to happen to me again. Because anything can happen. Anything can happen that doesn't have to come from within. It can be something on the outside. And rather than living in fear and being like, oh, I'm so worried that something's going to happen to my kids. They're going to, you know, get an accident or I'm going to get... Uh, another tumor somewhere else that they're not looking at. Rather, I'm focusing on that could happen. And so we should all live our lives like it could happen. Not like I'm afraid to go out and live, but I'm a, I want to experience every minute I have with this child or with my husband or with drinking a sip of water because we have to live our life with gratitude for the for the moment. One of the things that I was surprised by in your book was that when you came to New York, you had your whole plans for a career and you have become very much, I mean, you were doing a lot of amazing things, but you were really, I don't even know that I would call it supporting your husband's career, but you're behind the scenes maybe more than you thought. How has that been? I really never, when I was more of a performer, no one probably could have ever really told me that I could get as much satisfaction about being, you know, by being behind the scenes. But when you find that you're good at something, like I, you just go with it. Like you, it's like kind of like a a wedding dress. Like you always picture that you're going to wear the princess one that looks like Cinderella and then you put it on, you look ridiculous. And you're like, oh, (laughs) that's not the silhouette that, that actually looks good on me. 
And then you put the one on and you're like, oh my gosh, this is my wedding dress. But if you have that image of what it's going to be, you're just, you're never going to find the right dress. And I think that when I all of a sudden started producing and started directing and started being more behind the scenes, it wasn't that I was giving up on being in front of the camera, but I just realized how much more I liked and more felt like myself being in that kind of third eye role. And I felt more kind of in control of the whole art rather than just a little tiny part of it. Yeah, I love that because I think it's so, like such a testimony to like, even like God having plans bigger than we could dream, that we could ever dream ourselves. Like if we're kind of open to that and not sticking to our idea of the way things should be, that there's so much more adventure and joy out there for us, you know? It's just Absolutely. super super inspiring. Jeannie, thank you so much for chatting with us today. And I just hope that things continue to go great for you. Well, thank you for reading my book, too.